I'm just eating a granola bar. So, chocolate, almond, sea salt. Pretty good. <clears throat> Alright. Welcome back, students. Today we're going to learn about if statements. If statements can be used to control the flow of your program to make certain parts of code only run whenever certain conditions are true. First off, I want to make sure everyone understands about braces and or curly brackets, or sometimes maybe even people call them curly braces. Those people are wrong, but I hear it sometimes. So the important thing to note is that an open brace just indicates that uh, a block of code is starting, and a closed brace indicates that a block of code is ending. This is going to be used in Java to help us separate sections of code. So now let's talk about if statements. Look at all of these words here. Um, the basic idea is that we want to test if something is true or not, and if it is true, then we want to run some code. And if it's not true, we'll skip that code. That's the basic idea. What are some real-life if statements? If you're thirsty, drink some water. If your grade is less than 70, go to tutorials. If salsa exists, eat salsa. Simple. Now what does that look like in Java? Well, let's say we have a variable called grade, and we store 95 in there. We could have an if statement that says, if the grade is greater than 89, we want to do the code that's inside of the braces. So if you got a 95, then that's greater than 89, and it should print, good job, you got an A. If your grade was 89 or less, then it wouldn't run this inside block. So we've got three parts to an if statement. First is just the word if that says, hey, we're going to have an if statement. Then we need to follow it up with the test condition. Test condition is what's read in this example. That's the part that uh, contains a Boolean expression. And by Boolean expression, I mean it can be evaluated to either true or false. It's a comparison statement. So we're going to compare grade to 89 to see if grade is greater than 89. It's either true or this is false. Whatever we put inside of the parentheses of an if statement has to evaluate down to either true or false. In this example, since grade is 95, this will evaluate as true. The final part of our if statement is the code block. That's the block located inside of the braces that says what you should do if that condition was true. So if this part is true, we're going to do the stuff inside the braces. If we had another line of code down here, system.out.print something, it's going to see if grade is greater than 89. In this case, it is. It prints good job, it prints you passed, and then it goes down here and prints something. But if our grade was, say, 75, then grade is not greater than 89, and this part of code inside the block is skipped. So our program would just jump down here to the next statement after this block of code. So the code block of an if statement gets skipped if the condition is false. Now there's lots of different ways to compare values. And here are the most common ones that we're going to use in class. This compares if things are equal. This compares if things are not equal. This will let you know if something's greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Notice that the equal to comparison is a double equals. Let's talk about that. So in the past lessons, we've learned about the equal sign being the assignment operator, and that's how we assign a value to a variable. But whenever we want to compare equality, we use a double equals. That's the comparison operator, and it compares two values. If we just had a single one, then it would assign a value. But if we have a double one, then we're asking Java if something is equal or not. So here's an example of that, if num equals, so Java is going to let us know, so Java is now going to compare num and 15, and if num is 15, then this is true. This is a bad one, 
if num equals 15, we use the assignment operator rather than the comparison operator. And what this will do is take 15 and store that into num. But that's not what we intended. We wanted to compare them. So you want to use the double equals. That's a mistake you're probably going to make at some point in here. Also, you can't use double equals to compare strings. It only works with primitive data types. So you can compare integers, you can compare doubles, but if you want to try to, to compare strings like name equals Frank, unfortunately that doesn't work. We'll learn how to, how to test for that later. Remember that Java runs top to bottom. We have an if statement here. If that's true, it'll do this. Here's another if statement. If that's true, it'll do this. Whenever an if statement ends, it ends with that closing brace. And when it ends, it still continues line of code, whether it was true or not. If we change this to 5, 5 is greater than 1. So this will run, but 5 is not equal to 2. So this is false, and this wouldn't run. So our output now would just be 1. So we can make this a little bit more complicated with the else statement. So you know how if something is true, then you run the block of code inside of it? Well, you can also have a block of code for what to run if it's not true. That would be your else block. Here's some real life examples of an else statement. If your grade is less than 70, go to tutorials. Else, graduate. So let's say you have a 65. Your grade is less than 70, so you should go to tutorials. Let's say you have a grade of 85. If your grade is less than 70, well, that's not true. So we run the else block, and you graduate. So one of these two are going to run. I prefer this example. If you have salsa, eat salsa. Else, go buy some salsa and eat it. Here's the syntax for that in Java. So we have our if statement. We have our conditional, our test. Then we have the block of code that would run if it was true. And down here, we have a block of code that will run if it's not true. That part is under the else. So we're either going to run this line or we're going to run this line, depending on whether or not this is true. In this example, since a is 2, a does not equal 5, so this is false. 2 equals 5 is false, so we go to the else, and it prints goodbye. But wait, there's more! We could link these together and put an if statement attached to an else statement, and you end up with something called an if else if. And you can actually chain as many of these together as you want. Let me show you how this works. Let's say there are three possibilities. If you have salsa, then eat the salsa. But if you don't have salsa, then we need to run this if. If you have money, then go buy some salsa. But if you don't have money, what do you do? This else. Get a job, make money, and buy salsa. So there's three different possibilities. It's one of these three statements in green is going to run, and only one of these three statements in green is going to run. The reason we call it an if-else-if if is because we have our if-else, and then attached to our else is another if statement. So this if is connected to this else, and this if is connected to this else. So there's our if-else-if. If. Here's the syntax for that in Java with our three possibilities. Let's say I write a program where if the, uh, if the user has a grade of 100, I want it to, to print perfect. But if they didn't have a grade of 100, I at least want to give them credit if they passed. So if their grade is greater than 70, we can say you passed. And if they failed, then uh, get wrecked scrub. In this one, grade is 85 if score equals 100. Well, it's not equal to 100, so we'll go to the else. If score is greater than or equal to 70. Well, that's true. 85 is greater than or equal to 70. So we'll run this block, print you passed. Then we'll exit the if statement. We don't run this else because this if was true. So after this line of code, we'll then jump down to whatever code is following this chained if else if. Here's another if-else-if if that shows it being true on the very first possibility. We've got three possibilities here. We set a equal to 3, and in the very first one, if a is greater than 2, well, 3 is greater than 2. So the very first if met our condition. It's true. So we run this statement. We print hello, and then we can skip everything else in the chain and go to the code after the if-else-ifs. It doesn't have to be just three possibilities, though. Here's one with four possibilities. You can continue to chain them. If you have salsa, eat the salsa. 
But if not, if you have money, go buy some salsa. Well, let's say you don't have money, then we run this else. If you have morals, then get a job, make money, and buy salsa. But if you don't have morals, then else, just steal the salsa. Notice there is no possibility in here where you don't get salsa because, uh, man, what a terrible existence that would be. Notice how the indentation here is helpful in understanding what's going on. Whenever you're looking at the code, we have this indentation that sets these print statements out from our if statements with several spaces. You just hit the tab key uh, to jump in. That helps our code be readable because we can see we have an if, else, if, else and then we have the code blocks inside of it. So indentation is going to be pretty important. Look at this example here where there's no indentation. What a mess. It's really hard to tell what's happening in this code, but if you do proper indentation, then you can see, oh, we have an if with an else, and inside of this if, we have another if statement. Uh, so in order for this to print, this has to be true, and this has to be true. So it makes it easier to read the code whenever you have that indention. Remember that in uh, BlueJ, you can just do Control shift i and it'll handle your indentation for you. It'll help clean up your code. So basically, anytime you have braces, it's a good idea to indent what's on the inside of the braces. So after an if statement, we open the brace, and then we have a closed brace. Everything on the inside would be pushed in. This would be a bad example. Sometimes if you're looking at other people's code, other examples of Java code, you're going to see people do this. This is actually a more common convention, and most programmers use this. If, and then you got your condition, and then we put an open brace over here and a closed brace over here. But see how they're not lined up? Programmers get used to seeing this, and it doesn't bother us. But whenever you're just starting out, it's a better idea to line up your braces so that you can see every open brace has a closed brace because they're lined up. It makes it easier on you. But if you're doing Google searches for code to see uh, other examples of code, you'll probably come across this more often than this. Still in here, until we get the hang of it, I'd prefer that you do this. It'll help you make fewer mistakes. All right, let's take a look at our lab. All right, now I've got my Lab 6 Word document open. I created a new project for Lab 6. I created two new classes in it, Practice Problems and Calculator. Inside of practice problems, I set up my code skeleton to include the import statement and to include the scanner uh, console object instantiation line so that we can gather data from our user. Let's take a look at problem one. Declare an integer variable called A and get its value from the keyboard. Okay, let's just start with that. Problem one. Declare an integer value called A get its value from the keyboard. So that's going to be console.nextInt is the scanner method I'm going to use for that. And I don't want to get input from the user without trying to do a prompt first. I need to let them know that I want information. So let's include a prompt. What should our prompt say? Well, we're supposed to get an integer, so I'm going to go with enter a whole number and I want them to be able to type that on the same line so I'll go with a print statement rather than a print line okay let's test out that this works compile run pops up enter a whole number now check this out um, a lot of people have asked me this question our program is currently running now what happens if I go over here and I make a change and then I try to compile the program you get a message saying you can't compile while the machine is executing well, that's because it's currently still running whenever I tried to run the program last time, it's still over here waiting for me to type in a number. So I can't recompile the code while the code is running, and you'll get this error message. How do you make it stop running? Even if you close this, well, it won't let you close it, but uh, you can force it to close by, see this barber pole, the red and white striped pole? If you right-click on it, you can reset the Java Virtual Machine, or you can also use this shortcut, Control-Shift-R. By resetting the virtual machine, it stops running the program, and you can close that window now. Now you can compile and run your code again. So if you get that message, it's probably because your program is currently running, and you need to reset the Java virtual machine. So that's why whenever you're resizing this window, 
You don't want to push it so small that you can't see that barber pole. Barber pole is helpful. I'm going to call it a barber pole. I don't know what it's actually supposed to look like. All right, so we got a write an if statement that will print good number if a is equal to 9. All right, so we want to check to see if a is equal to 9. So I've just made a mistake. Remember, you can't use a single equals. What this will do is store 9 into a, but we want to do a, a comparison. If a equals 9. So this will compare a to 9 and evaluate to either true or false. Let's put some braces in here. So anything inside of those braces is what's going to happen if a is equal to 9. So what am I supposed to do? Print good number. System.out.print. Let's make it a print line. Good number. And we're very excited about this. So we include an exclamation point. Compile. We're good. Run. Enter a number. All right, well, let's try it out with 9. It worked. Let's try it with something that's not 9. Let me run it again. Enter a whole number. 5. So it doesn't print good number. Perfect. Problem 2. Declare an integer variable called b and get its value from the keyboard. Now that's going to look very similar to this one. Copy paste. So enter a whole number. This time we're storing it in b. Write an if statement that will print, that's a big number, if b is larger than 100. Okay, so I'm going to use another conditional. Let me grab that if. Put it down here. Oh, Control-Shift-I cleans up your uh, indentation. If b, what am I testing? If b is larger than 100. So if b is greater than 100, I want to print, that's a big number. That's a big number. Compile. Run. So you want to test these out with the numbers that are given. 9, okay, that worked. Uh, I think 135 is the example in the sample output. That's a big number. So those are the numbers where the test conditions are true, and you can also run it with test conditions that are false. So 5, that's not 9. So it doesn't print that's a good number. Um, two, that's not a big number, so it doesn't print that's a big number. So far, so good. And so here is a little uh, added bonus for those of you who made it this far in the video. In Java, we put these open and close braces to indicate a block of code where it starts and stops. So that allows us to put lots of code inside the braces should we want to. And it would know if a is 9 to do all of these things but just these things and then it would move on to the next code after that. If what you're doing inside of the braces is only one line of code like this one, if there's only one line of code inside the braces then the braces aren't necessary. Check it out. I can take those out and Java knows that because there are no braces then if this is true, I only want to run the next line of code. But if it's false, I want to move on. So the braces are really only necessary if you have multiple lines of code inside the braces. So that's just a little bonus for those of you who made it this far. And uh, you should be able to figure out the rest on your own. Good luck on the lab. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button! Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.